there's a few things that we've implemented um, in our programs that I, I believe, uh, well, we did it one because I believe in them and two, because I think that the industry really needs to look at these things. Uh, one is that monitoring service. So you can put monitoring services on a, um, a motor vehicle report and on a background check. So, you know, whether it's an underwriting requirement on the background check, for example, or it's just a standard of the industry, you know, I think it's critical to be able to know when somebody's background check or something in their motor vehicle report has changed and those monitoring services, um, they'll do that. So they're going to, they're going to ping those reports and they're going to let you know if there's a change. And then at that point, you've got kind of a, you know, a fork in the road, if you will, um, you're either going to keep that driver um, or you're not based on those, um, those things that come back on the monthly report. Uh, and in addition to that, um, you know, if you look at a, a motor vehicle report and a background check, there, there could potentially be a lot of subjectivity um, as to what's mm -hmm. acceptable and what's not. And Edie kind of alluded to this earlier, um, which is, you know, he knew a, a couple of things around the background check. Maybe they weren't severe, but they were there. You can also implement um, auto adjudication services on those types of uh, things as well. So you set the requirements. Um, it's, it's now technology doing the work, right? It says, it's okay, here's the MVR came in. Here's the requirement that I'm judging against the driver is qualified or they're not. So I think, you know, when you look at, you know, new features as it relates to screenings, the driver's files, uh, what have you, I think looking at auto adjudication and monthly monitoring services are, are a big deal in my opinion.